Uh, here we go. Oh, oh, hey. oh, oh he, hey, guys. He, he's spilling. Ah. Oh, Welcome sorry. to episode 71 of CMD Towers Brews and Builds. I'm Mr. Comma number five, and my fellow host does prey upon Mr. Bevers for wins, Big Tuck. How dare you? <laughs> I'm one I'm one for seven or eight or something like that with that guy, <laughs> but uh Tuesday, we'll see what we'll see if I can make magic happen again. Uh hey, I don't have any bits for this opener. I we were talking beforehand. I'm sure I look tired uh for this time, but you can't tell because I'm wearing my glasses. Uh, and it, and it's funny because like where my webcam and my mic stand, the webcam literally covers your eyes like Cyclops. So I feel like you're an <laughs> so, X Man right now. So, I'm always, so it looks like I'm always wearing that. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> this week was I uh, I this week I just felt like I've been like sleepwalking through it. I don't know why, but you on the other hand, Mister Combo, look very clear in the face. You look like you're well rested. Has your Mark Cuban? Has your Mark? How's your Mark Cuban? Uh, workout plan been working for you what's what's i you switch your moisturizer what's going on here <laughs> no it's uh it's been going good I'm, I'm just at the point now in this quarter so i've been working with a particular school district for the last couple years um you know and it's funny the the it leader at at the school district actually told my bosses that he feels like i'm more of their employee than my oh. company's employee <laughs> yeah. which, which which you know that's a that's a that's a nice little thing and so, uh, you know, it just we just found out this last Monday, so now two Mondays ago, uh, that we were awarded a pretty significant uh, multi-million dollar contract. Nice. Uh, so that that was awesome, and um, you know, I'm very excited to be able to help out the district. And so, like, that was a big weight off the shoulders. Right. Uh, working with this large corporate account in town that I've been dealing with, like an RFP for the last few months, I got awarded like one and a half million dollars of that contract. So that felt great. So it's just like Sweet. a lot of stuff is just finally coming to fruition it's a holiday it's, it's it's the holidays yeah. and i effing love christmas. i know you got your christmas uh, sweater on and everything oh yeah <laughs> what's so that saying christmas trees lit oh it's just saying is the only thing getting lit this year yeah Un unforgivable that's one i would look even better though which is sad that pretty that slick jund sweater that you were working on oh god i know well, like, uh, what, maybe what if we're still do, right? maybe if maybe if we're still relevant in a year, we could try it again. <laughs> it is, it is the world has imploded. Who is this? Identify yourself. This is a secure channel. Uh, hello, this is a uh, this is Russian Squee. Russian Squee. So uh, I'm gonna cut you off right there. So I am. Uh, I. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut no, that right in the bud. Whatever. I don't. He, care. He, he, you just Kanye Wested him. I'm gonna, yeah. Let me. What's it? What do you say? Let me grab the mic. Word, but I, I really gotta say something right now. Yeah. What? what there was something. It's like I need. I'm. I need to say something. I don't know. But anyway. So uh, I've been thinking because I'm in the move to Charlotte. I'm gonna be moving into an apartment complex and not my own house. So mm -hmm. I've already started looking into like, okay, how many? How much soundproofing? egg crates or whatever they call them do i have to buy to put up on my walls like i'm really going to my neighbors to be like i record a podcast i'm extraordinarily loud just if there's something wrong just knock but i'm like okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna get ahead of the game and just hang up a bunch of like soundproofing stuff in whatever room i end up in next to that wall and see if that makes any well, change little, but uh, little advice from squee that that won't help at all um that will not soundproof anything. It, that just blocks the reverb in your own room from your mic picking it up. Uh -huh. but it'll still go straight through those walls. So uh, they're going to hear you no matter what, unless you actually like insulate the wall mm. and then put a little air gap and build another wall. It's, on the insides. Ooh, that's why, that's why I the, got the it. studio here is underground. There's, there's nowhere for it to go. I got it, Tuck. You pick a closet in your apartment. And you set up like a little like poker table in there in your microphone and have like your little laptop and you just like close the door and you stay <laughs> yeah, in this closet. In that one closet. That's not a bad idea, actually. There's two supposedly two walk in closets, which is weird. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is weird trying to think through that and the holidays. I don't like the holidays. I don't care for them. I'm not going to lie to you. Maybe I'm just like a Scrooge now, but it's just like so much pressure. You're the Grinch. That's it's a very Scrooge like, thing to say. I just I'm over it. I don't know that I'm not the jolly. I'm not the jolly. I well, the thing I like the most about it is how you can say happy Honda days. That's pretty much the most excitement I get out of the holidays. Wow. And, Jesus. Uh, there, you there's another a, a riotous like, life. <laughs> what are you, what are you we, do? How are you doing from the Rich Chaos Records studio? Oh, I'm, I'm doing really well. It's uh, it's 
been a beautiful December. It was 65 degrees today in the middle of December. So uh, winter can hashtag suck it. And I uh, got a promotion. I think I, I said that on the, the news there, but I got promoted to work. So I'm, I'm working full time Ooh. at the brewery now, which is pretty dang awesome. Awesome. Uh, awesome. By full time, I guess I'm going to work on my schedule a little bit here afterwards. I'm in a transition phase. <laughs> so I'm working out front and in the back at the same time. So I'm working from last Saturday through the Saturday after this one. No, through the wow. Sunday after this one. Every single day. I mean, that's nice. great, right? Like, yeah. Oh, man, that's uh, a lot of monies. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then all the money. So all these holiday good. things. And uh, what the hell? I mean, you, you go there, you work, you get free beer. It's, it's really not that bad, you know? They have this new beer there that's like, what do they call it? Their winter Dunkel? Their Dunkelbach? Dunkelbach, yep. Yeah, it's like ten and a half percent, but goes down like a freaking logger. It's inc- it's brutal. I had one on Sunday when I stopped by there with some friends, and I was uh, like, "That one, the best." I'm gonna local, do one. That one, the best local Kansas City specialty beer twice in a row now from the pitch. Booyah! Yeah, I don't have. I, just, I don't know. Game I, who I don't know nothing about the pitch as a magazine. I I don't have. I got nothing. I got nothing, man. <laughs> this week has just been like like <laughs> a blank slate. Well, since we have nothing else to talk about, if you guys want to know more ways to support us and our nonsensical ideas and our, I, I don't even know where to go with this. That just shows how bad I am at this podcast. We're, 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 this was one person hates Christmas, one person loves Christmas, and then I'm going to work a lot. And I, I think that's, that's where we're at. Summary, summary done. Uh, if you want to support CMD Tower and all the content we put out, just head over to our sponsor, Level One Game Shop. They do sell everything you need from a tabletop gaming perspective, magic, Dungeons and Dragons. I'm sure they have risk. I might just be going out on a limb there. Uh, but they also um, support you guys with the monthly giveaways. So please hook them up, whether it's singles, sealed. I even think they had uh, Commander Spellbook Greens for like 70 bucks. Oh, yeah. 65 70 somewhere mm-hmm. in there it was a heck of a deal that is a good deal but if you guys actually would like to help us out financially maybe help tuck upgrade his microphone setup since he's leaving yeah. the kansas city metro area uh you should have to our patreon patreon.com slash cmd tower we have many different pledge levels and they go from just a dollar a month to get access into the discord and be put in for random deck therapy all the way up to 25 dollars, where you get all the cmd tower swag discord deck therapy uh you get to see uncle aj's memes because they're just straight oh, fire it's incredible uh it's absolutely amazing uh but you know whatever level it's always appreciated and it does go into making this channel even better yeah but if you if you can't help out from a monthly perspective but you do see those big tuck monarch tokens on mr bever's twitch channel and you're like ooh, i gotta get me one of those Head over to cmdtower.com slash merch. We sell everything on there uh, from sleeves to play mats. I do all the shipping for my home. So, yes, I am terrible at shipping stuff very quickly. Uh, Spencer, I promise by the time you've heard this, I will have had your sleeves in the mail. <laughs> they are coming. You, you have to That's believe true. us. But if you guys can't help us out financially, uh, just share the content you're watching and listening to because every little bit of interaction from the collective does help. And of course, Pink Royal, we pro- we really appreciate the music you guys provide at the beginning and the end. And stay tuned so at the end of the episode, you can get details on how you can win both Commander Legends EDH decks plus a CMD Tower playmat and sleeves from level one. So Bruise and Builds is our deck deck series, and since we conquered the path to 32, we have moved on to the endless themes that EDH can bring us. Each month will be a new theme, and we correlate how those decks are constructed similar to how a beer is brewed. So we broke it down into four different categories. The first one's ramp instead of your board state. We call that grain. Yes, and grains are the foundation of every beer, and they include both base and specialty malts, usually in about a 60 to 40 ratio. This helps with the color, the taste, and most importantly, the alcohol content of the beer. Decks always need ways to grow, stabilize, and ramp your bigger threats. And just like your grain profile, they're usually a mix of staples and specialty cards. The next one's going to be how does your board, hand, deck interact with all of your opponents? We call that hops. Yes, and hops give the beer its patented bitterness and herbal floral flavors. They grow in a variety of strands and help distinguish subcategories like IPAs. A hop choice is help clear and interact with the board so you can, your deck can do what it wants. And then one of my favorite sections, how does your deck actually close out and accomplish its goal or win the game? That's yeast. And yeast are living microorganisms that eat the sugar from the grain and poop out alcohol and CO2. It adds alcohol content and carbonation, 
without yeast to be drinking flat sugar water, without yeast cards, your deck would meet the goal of winning the game. And then we have, uh, we call this the Mr. Godfather special yeah. shenanigans. Pet card synergies that just don't make much sense mm -hmm. in the deck, but you want to put them in anyways. We call that spice. And uh, not every beer has them, but spices and other additives help separate a normal stock beer from a specialty one. It could be the pepper that turns a stout into a jalapeno stout, or the addition of hops that turn IPA into a double IPA. Not every deck has something that makes it pop, but if it does, this is where we generally talk about it. And then to wrap up the episode, we do have a bottle capping. It's going to be big tucks and eyes, cuts and adds to the deck that are going to be under $5, under 50 bucks, and a no budget recommendation. The only restriction is no mana only lands. And we're even doing something very cool this month with our theme is that we're actually going to be gifting these cards to the deck owner. So pretty much every card yeah. will be under $5. It's $5, under $5, under 50, under five, under 100, under five, or personal recommendation under five. So <laughs> let's, not get, let's not get ourselves here. With a stretch goal of under 99 cents. Oh, yeah. So without further ado, let's get brewing. Um, as mentioned in previous episodes, December 2020 is our White Elephant Month. This month is all about the decks that Big Tech and I have either gifted or built for the Godfather, the creator of Half Dragon Flatlander himself. Oh, right. So today's deck is actually one of his better decks. Goreclaw be flexing. <laughs> uh, so this is a Goreclaw Terror of Calcisma deck. Uh, so, Big Tuck, why don't you read what Goreclaw does, and then I'll kind of describe how this deck came to fruition. Yeah, because I, okay, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you're taking that on, because I have some questions. So, Goreclaw, Terror of Call, Sisma, Sisma, Call, Sisma, 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 Sisma don't work here no more. <laughs> nice. There's also, no, we have some ripe, we actually, now that I think about it, there's some ripe cards in here for some uh, deprecated bits that we need to bring back. She is a 4-3 legendary creature bear uh, for three colors in the green. She is a rare coming in around four bucks, which is insane. Uh, creature spells you cast with power four or greater cost two less to cast. Whenever uh, Goreclaw attacks, each creature you control with power four or greater gets plus one, plus one and gains trample until end of turn. You don't want to know how she got that name. I w oh, it is a she. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mama bear, right? right? Or one of them. The big bear, bear, bear. 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 Speaking of which, so I earlier was very concerned because I don't know where my cat is. And it's very hard to miss him, <laughs> but he must be hiding in the basement for some reason. Yeah, he heard you're moving to North Carolina and he was like, F that. Dude, it's gonna I be, hate uh, hurricanes. It's going to be so hot it. for him down there. He's like, I love this house. What are you doing to me? Yeah. So this debt came to fruition. This is now a week after the drinkathon would have happened this was actually the godfather's legendary creature he picked from the drinkathon oh, okay uh the, the reason it was one of the cards for the drinkathon that was up as a prize because friend of the cast of the goad likes to meme mr combo <laughs> and uh at magic fest vegas last year saw that i had a non-foiled gore claw <laughs> and my totally foiled out god deck because I didn't want to spend the money on it. So he went and bought every single foil gore claw at Magic Fest Vegas and then secretly put them into all the decks that I had brought. <laughs> right. And so just yes. they just kept coming up and kept coming up. Oh, so I had an done. excess of gore claws. It was it was a great bit. And so that's the one that the Godfather picked. And you know, he had I don't know, we were hanging out one night. I think he'd left the card here. And, uh, you know, we were drinking, hanging out to like 3 a.m. like we do. And I think he'd made the comment or something of, oh, you know, I think I want to like actually like try to like figure out what the hell to do with this thing. And I was like, oh, man, like, you know, yeah, tomorrow let's go through my cards and, you know, just see, see what happens. And so initially it started with, oh, let me just grab piles of stuff that he can look through and build the deck. And then I just building it myself. So uh, I built probably 80% of this deck. Uh, now, there's a lot of stuff that I did not put in here uh, that I don't know why it's in here. But pretty much the gist is it's very straightforward. Yeah. Get out big power for greater creatures. Smack face. That's really what it is. It is the what I believe the definition of commander was five, six, seven years right. ago. Very battle cruiser. Um, and to that point, this is probably the deck that I would say the Godfather either wins or gets second place almost every yeah. time he plays it. Yeah. So, OK, I have a little I have a different history because I'm pretty sure at some point you asked me because there's cards in here that I owned at one point. So I'm pretty sure there was some point in this rig and roll where, you're, where you asked, like, hey, do you have a spare? Do you have spare mono green stuff that you can donate for? I think it was this deck. 
You know what I'm talking about? Ooh, and I you know what? You, I think you are right. I think I gave you a big stack of stuff because we'll get into it. But I was looking through here and I was like, I don't think Mr. Combo or Davis, for that matter, would ever have a copy of any of these cards. Uh, I, I so look okay, to these also because every once in a while I get surprised by your picks and I was like, wait, that was one of my cards. What the hell? Right. Well, and, and like I so. I know just looking through this deck, it obviously looks really strong and like it seems like it's pretty well put together, um, just as you would with a Gore Claw deck. But honestly, I can't even tell you if I've ever seen it because right when this, I think right when this got built, there was like, it was just lousy with Gore Claw decks all over the place. Like, Will had one, uh, former friend of the thing, Mariner Ryan, aka Fat Ryan, had one. Uh, Will had the, <laughs> Will had the meme deck against you, and then uh, another guy, uh, Nance, who's one of Marketing Ross's good friends. He also had one of these, I think. So there's just piles of these lying around, and I honestly just cannot remember him ever playing this or anything. Mm. Um, but shockingly, three for three, his land base is right there. Yeah, perfect, 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 perfect one- circle. <laughs> The one thing I will say, though, this is the first deck we've done this month that the number of lands actually concerns me. There's only 34. Oh, okay. There is, so there's 34. Gotcha. I was wondering about that. Yeah. But I think, like, it, I just feel like you can kind of cheese it a little bit more with mono green, more so than any yeah, other color, fair. right? Um, now, yeah. the big, maybe the bigger concern is the CMC on average 4.27? Yeah, but most creatures power four right. greater or over CMC four. Yeah, which it, it, well, and the funny thing though, Big Tuck. So if we look at his mana curve on uh, tapped out, yeah. which the deck list will be posted on cmdtower.com slash bnb e seventy one shameless plug. Uh, so if you actually look at the converted mana cost bar graph, I think the only reason that the deck is higher on the cmc is because he does have nine drop 10 yep. drops and 11 drops and he doesn't have a lot like he has right. one 11 drop two 10 drops and three nine drops i think is what that is yeah yep you're right yeah so i think that's the only reason it, it's so big because if you look at it he has god what is that 14 yeah, he has 14 Dude, three, three drops, drops, 11 two drops, uh, nine one drops. He has a ton of low end stuff. Mm-hmm. I just think it's maybe that that top end is just so yeah. massive. It just kind of offshoots it a little bit. And again, another oh, budget deck for I him, especially. Say, I have to say, I need to steal your quote. I want to make a bumper sticker out of this a CMD Tower bumper sticker. You can cheese a little more in mono green. Oh, <laughs> just, it ben, hits so fine. Ben, ben cheesing. Uh, yeah, and also I think there's a, I, and this is more of like, we don't need to get in like the broad strokes of this, but there's a lot of cards in here that I guarantee we just have lying around that there's, there's, there are cards that function very similar at a lower mana cost that are just more expensive. And like, you probably, sure. if you have them, they're already probably in decks, right? So if, yeah, like, I think that also counts uh, probably a lot of those two and three drops could easily just be turned into one drops or of some variety. Right. So but again, like this is the Godfather we're talking about, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, and when you talk about budget, you know, the other decks were like 40, 50, mm-hmm. $60. This is between like 88 and 114. But if you notice, it's because of one card in the hop <laughs> section that right now is $45 that? Okay, that I we'll, put in. We'll, 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 spoiler alert, we'll get into that because there's a lot of questions about how that came into being, but here we are. Oh, yeah, I just had an extra one, so I put it in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a headache. Let's, we better get into this. <laughs> Let's get into this. We're going to start with that grain section, and I'll start this off with a card that, honestly, I didn't know existed. I'm assuming this came from the Godfather's like old magic collection he got from a friend in a garage where he got a lot of his French lands. It's from, it looks like, Dark Ascension. Dark Ascension? Is, is that what it is? The moon? Oh, no, 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 no. That's from The Dark. The Dark. Oh, The Dark. Yeah, The Dark. Oh, got it. Is this go. both of us? Yeah. yeah, it is. Three, two, one. Gaius Touch! Gaius Touch. Woo! Uh, Gaius Touch, two green. That's fine. It's an enchantment. You may, pl- you may put one additional land in play during each of your turns, but that land must be a basic forest. Then you can sack Gaius Touch to add uh, double green to your mana pool. Um, you can play it as an interrupt. So pretty much like a mana source there. So, okay. This was the this was the one card where I was looking at this and I was like, wait a minute. I'm the only person that's ever owned a copy of that card besides Fat Ryan. 
and squee i guess congratulations but i knew that i i'm pretty sure this came for me i have like i you not i have like 35 copies of this no shot because this was a card that i took out of my binder and put into a deck box and handed to mr combo to put in here so that's what i was like (laughs) i thought i was only responsible for building one of these decks and in reality i've been responsible for maybe half of this uh so my thoughts on this are i like this card a lot i think it's i i don't know if i'd go as far to call it like a standard in mono green i think it's really good but there's been times where i've played this card and you get, i get the benefit out of it maybe once and then it's just kind of a sure. drop so I, I have a copy of this that i've been trying to figure out where to put so that's my personal history with it but mr combo what do you what do you think about the inclusion here yeah so i think it's not a standard for mono green at all unless we start getting more niche and you said mono green stompy right i do think it's a standard and mono green stompy so if you get this out between turn one and four and say you get its ability twice Mm -hmm. potentially on turn six you are casting a 10 drop right because you drop your extra forest plus your forest for turn and then you could sacrifice it for two green it doesn't right. say like you have to do one or the other on each of your turns mm-hmm. so i think in a gore claw deck this is a slam dunk right i think this is probably a slam dunk in uh the gishath decks mm-hmm. i think that's probably great I run this in Omni, uh, so, so i can dump extra lands out yeah, and I was gonna say mono, mono green, mono green Omnom or like Azusa's mono greens. This deck, this card is an all star. Uh, friend, of, no, he, he's he's talking I'm about his. Uh, yeah, no, his, I know. Yeah, he's talking about angry Omnom. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, okay. I, I agree. I that's depends on how many basic forests you run, I guess. But in mono green Omnom, the big oh, yeah, ones great. like uh, friend of the show, Tice. Here we go, Alu. This this card pays for itself in weight, and it's still less than two dollars, which is pretty rad, considering it hasn't been reprinted. Yeah. I don't think ever. <laughs> well, Big Tuck, what's your second card? Uh, so this is one. This is a card that I have a really, I'm very torn on because I think that it brings up a really interesting argument and a conversation. So it's a sorcery that is on its face not as good as other sorceries in the three slot but potentially could be even better. Hmm. So I wanted to hear your thoughts, especially on far wanderings. So Ah. this is a weird one. Um, Two colors and a green. It's a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card. Then put that card onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library threshold. If seven or more cards are in your graveyard, instead search your library for up to three basic land cards, put them on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. So I there's an article on EDH Rec where it talks about like breaking the curve or something about sure you know like how murder isn't very good um, so you know it's a good hey, so you know it's a good source <laughs> uh, but uh, they they said that they thought this card is better than cultivate or Kadama's Reach and I'm no, not sure I, I don't there. I don't think I agree with that I think no. I think it's better I mean obviously it's better late game than drawing one of those. But generally, yeah. even if you draw this in the late game with threshold, three basics coming to the battlefield tapped isn't going to win you the game or likely won't do a whole hell of a lot. So here's the thing. I think, once again, for a non Goreclaw deck, this is not a good card unless you just want another landfall mm-hmm. trigger. In a Goreclaw deck, though, you really need it because even with Goreclaw's reduction, you need as many lands as you can, or you're just literally going to play creature pass. Right, right, right. So late game, pay three, get three basics. Potentially your next turn, you're going to be playing two or three massive Mm -hmm. creatures because each creature gets reduced by two. So that's where I actually do think this is, this is a great late game card, but it's still okay for early game. If you just need to get one more. Yeah. yeah, if you just need one more to maybe cast Gore Claw and that two reduction gets you to where you need mm-hmm. to be, it's still good. But I think this is amazing late game because each of those basics potentially could be used for their own independent creature. So really think about it this way. With Gore Claw out, each basic land is a uh, green and two colorless. Ah, that's true. That's true. So that's the reason I really like it because it's almost a three green six colorless if you're doing three different creatures and that's an amazing great yeah it, it's true but it's all dependent on gore claw yeah yeah and that's the thing I, that's my only 
that's the thing that I, I I just would rather have something that's more consistent and you know exactly what you're having each time when you draw it. But sure. I think it is a good point in this deck. Even that late game, if you do get that extra turn, it could be, do some real it could do some real work for you. So uh, yeah, interesting yep. interesting card for sure. So the second one I want to talk about is an enchantment, and the thing that this deck only functions is if you have your commander out there at a minimum. And Colossal Majesty yeah. is a card that will help refill up your hand. Uh, so two colorless green enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control a creature with power four or greater, draw a card. Might doesn't just build empires. It protects them. Is that a uh, NT Sun Empire Knight? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So uh, I like this card a lot because, you know, the way that you should play this deck and the way the Godfather plays it is get Goreclaw out as quickly as you can. Right. And and try to go from there. Um, I talked about how important it is that you always have a bunch of lands out so that way you can use that to reduction as many times as possible. This will get you to make sure you hit your land drops. It's going to make sure that you get to your next uh, power four or greater creature. And it's an enchantment. And honestly, since you it doesn't say for each creature you control with power four or greater draw a card because that'd be no, that'd stupid. Be incredible. <laughs> uh, nobody's going to waste a removal spell on this. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's like there's three, and I don't know if you're gonna name one, maybe later for the cutting because I almost did, but we've talked about it so much. There's like three enchantments that all do some variants of this, right? Yeah, right. And it's just always it's interesting to me where it's like, I think every green deck needs to run one of them, right? And then I think it's from there it's just based on price and availability and stuff. I think colossal sure. majesty. If you're running, I think this one works better if you're not planning on. If, if you're trying to run more of like a Voltron or a very go tall deck, which is what this is, right? Even if Goreclaw gets mm -hmm. killed, you'll likely still have one. You'll have another two. one. You'll have one or two, right? Yeah. Whereas some other decks like a Reese, for example, there, this may not be as good compared to the others. So again, for 59 cents, I think this is an easy pickup if you're in the, in the market for this sort of thing. And like you said, you're going to play this and you're going to have it for the rest of the game. <laughs> Yeah, and the only other caveat I'd put on it is I'd probably only run it in a deck, and this is probably just because I'm a bad Magic player, but I'd only run it in a deck if my commander was power four or greater because I don't want to bank on the fact... Like, yeah. I wouldn't run this in my Gearid deck because I cast Gearid. Yeah, I could get a Rhino, but then it's going to get killed. The, the reason it works well in this deck is because you're going to have multiple, like you said, mm -hmm. power four or greater creatures. So even if someone target removes one, you're okay. Yeah. And yeah. then even if someone board wipes, you cast your commander and you got it right back. Some decks that like to have the go tall or go fluffy, the commander isn't that power. It's like, oh, I need to get that and then it's going to help me get this or mm -hmm. I can tap it next turn to make a token. And, and then it's a little too flimsy. And I think that's where maybe some of the other card draw enchantments might be a little bit better because right, right, it right. might give you some flexibility. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. It just depends on the deck and your play style and all that jazz as well. All right. Well, what's your last grain card so this is a card that i think used to be expensive and then it's gotten reprinted a gazillion times so it's a weird take on so a lot of green ramp is elf based so whenever there's a card that's mm -hmm. green ramp that's not elf based it makes me very excited um so this has been a card i've liked for a long time uh and it helps you out better than other cards in the early game because it makes a really good blocker so mm -hmm. i want to talk about wall of roots so Colorless and green for an 05 creature plant wall with defender mana grows uh, and changes. Wait, hold on. How do we want her to sound? Oi, mana grows and changes <laughs> like the roots of a plant. <laughs> like a plant must be nurtured uh, from Nissa Ravine, who I guess sounds like a Nissa is like a Scottish. Yeah, she, man sound, she sounds like Braveheart. a jerk and Scottish person from Kansas. <laughs> um, so again, good blocker. But then the kicker is put a put a zero one. Put in minus zero, minus one counter on Wall of Roots. Add green to your mana pool. Activate this ability only once per turn. So for me, I think this is really cool. And I think kind of underplayed in green, if I'm going to be honest with you. Sure, it kind of dings itself down over time. But the yeah. fact that you can get that mana, if you have something to activate, if you have an activate ability, it says once each turn. So in that sense, it never really taps down. If you have something to do with it, right? I don't know what that would be, depending on the deck. But this card is always, I've always really liked this, right? You play it early game, you get your blocker, even that turn when it comes down, that turn comes down, you might as well play out another land or elves or another one drop, right? And then you're like back up to parity. So 
you want as much ramp as you as possible in this deck. I think this gives you a good blocker and a good source of uh, mana over and over and over again. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, and you're going to hear me say this a lot in this deck. <laughs> Nobody's going to target remove this. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, so no, no so it's just going to sit there. Um, and so it, it's, a, it's a great early game to help you, like you said, you know, turn two, do this, Lanawar Elves, mm -hmm. um, which is fantastic. Or say you play your Gore Claw, someone blows up your Gore Claw. Well, this can either help pay for command tax or it can help pay the reduction that Gore Claw was going to help do on your exactly. bigger creature. Um, and you know what? When it eventually dies... You netted three mana out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Yep, totally agree. So, it, again, it's not the most optimized, but I think it works really well in this deck. All right, my last one. It's a card that I hate. <laughs> okay. I hate it. It gets played in almost every green deck uh, that doesn't have blue because green doesn't have this many oh. cards. It does best. <laughs> I know exactly. But the only... Only reason I'm talking about it is because I have seen the Godfather play this deck enough, and it seems like when you play Goreclaw with that mana reduction, you end up running out of cards a lot quicker than you would think, even though everything costs a hell of a lot in your hand. So Harmonize mm -hmm. is something that every Goreclaw deck honestly needs. I don't think this needs to be a green standard at all, <laughs> but I get it. People uh, disagree. So... Two colorless, green, green. It's a sorcery. Words lie, just like this card. <laughs> People lie, like Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> like we talk. The land tells the truth. <laughs> uh, draw three cards. Um, yeah, you need it in the deck. I don't like the fact that you need it in the deck. I wish you didn't. I wish there was more enchantments that we could load onto the battlefield to draw cards every upkeep. But here we are. Uh, there have been so many games where I've seen the Godfather just have like one card in hand and it's like a removal spell. And he's like, I play land pass. Yeah. Play land pass. So you need it. I am one of the people who thinks this Maybe is a you green. Can get him a Christmas present of the commander spell book green. Ooh. And give him a Sylvan library, no. a couple other goodies. Yeah. I was going to say, no. I was going to say, I know we're not going to cut it. We're going to cut it like. If you can afford a Sylvan Library, it's infinitely better than this card, right? And I'm not saying... Oh, sure. And, but the fact that it is 45 cents and has been reprinted over and over and over again, it's just like... I, I understand, and also you don't like draw... You don't... You don't. You also don't like spells that just draw cards, right? So, right. so that's that's a fair... That's that's definitely fair to your play style. Um, and what's... I think even to your point, uh, what's funny is that now that green is the best color in magic for whatever reason, <laughs> there's so many spells where you can draw cards. It wouldn't surprise me that harmonize yeah. at some point is just going to get axed and, you, and you're, and you're yeah. just going to find out like we're going to be in three years. Just be like, oh, great. Another harmonize, like time to throw that in the dumpster fire. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, but I already do that. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to wrap up the uh, green build. Now we're going to talk about the hot profile and big tuck. Uh, I will say this deck, not as much hoppy stuff as the Godfather usually plays. He usually plays Indeed. very interactive with the opponents. So, yeah, I, actually, is this our smallest hot profile ever at 12? <sighs> that's not very it's it has to be, be up there. Be, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's not yeah. very many. I mean, 18 yeast is quite a bit, right? 10, 10 spice is quite a bit. And then there's just a bunch of forests. So there are not very many forests. <laughs> um, so ever since we had on whoever did the fight deck, I don't remember who it was, but I have. That's Lowry, you jerk. Was it Lowry? All right. Well, you can suck it. Uh, I have seen this card mentioned. I've seen it in more decks. And I, it's just baffling to me. Like, it's like when someone's like, oh, I've never seen a two yellow Yaris. You're like, yeah, me neither. And then for the next week, you only see Toyota Yaris's, right? Um, <laughs> so I'm talking about an Apex card. Yeah, we are. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Three, two, one. Apex. Apex Altasaur. Altasaur. Seven colors, two green for 10 10. It is a rare. rare. And it is a dinosaur, if you couldn't tell. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> when Apex Altasaur enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Then it does have Enrage. Whenever Apex Altasaur is dealt damage, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. It brings belligerence to new heights. Ooh, that's good. I like that a lot because it's Saul, right? Uh, I this so 
Getting this card down for nine is great. Getting this card down for seven, seven? is insanity. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's, wild. it's so dumb. So the I guess the only thing that sucks is cause enrage isn't so Oh, never mind. This is this is exactly what happened last time. I'm always like, I think this card's good, yep. but but then I remember because I yeah no you you could stop once yeah, it's at one toughness or it's about to die, which is bonkers, <laughs> right? Like it's just so good. Um, an eleven eleven trampler when it can swing is freaking completely busted. Uh, it's so great. Three dollars worth every single penny for it, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and this is the perfect Godfather card because he'll play it. He'll do his like, yeah. <laughs> yes. and then he'll be like, then he like he like puts out his hand with like his long skinny ass fingers, like I'm I'm gonna fight that, yeah. and then I'm gonna that. fight that, and then I'm gonna fight that. And honestly, knowing him, he'll just fight till the, his own. Oh, that's, that's what I was gonna say. Like he he'll have so much fun <laughs> casting this card. It's just gonna kill it, and he's not even gonna. He's not. It, it might as well just come in and just be like a three three right that kills three other creatures. But if you do it the right way, what you should do is you fight as much as you can, then you swing with it, because then it gets plus one, plus one, and trample. Right. Then whoever blocks it, if they block, they're an idiot. But if they block, <laughs> then you start blowing a bunch of stuff up, including the blocker, and then you trample over all 11 of your right. damage. Oh, man. It's so good. I just realized this is just a green ver This is like a greasier... Well, no, sorry. It's a slimy, it's, it's a slimy version of uh, Massacre Girl in in green. Yeah, right? I'd say that. Yeah, but it's just, yeah. it's a cool card. Um, I wish it wasn't three dollars. I think it was like fifty cents not too long ago. So beyond that, it's just awesome. And I have no idea where you got this from, but good on you. Uh, that's probably me. Oh yeah. I mean, it came in a commander set. So. Yeah, just had one. Just had one. All right. Around. Big Tech, we're going to talk about the $45 part in the room. I'm not even gonna, here we go. <laughs> not even going to use the shaker. <laughs> Threw the shaker across the <sighs> Wait, is this yours too? Yes! Because <laughs> that's insanity. Oh, all right. Three, two, one. Ulamog, the, the infinite, infinite Yire. Yire. 11 colorless <laughs> mythic Eldrazi. It's a 10-10. Oh, wow. When you cast it, destroy target permanent, indestructible, and night layer 4. When it's put into a graveyard, you monster mash. Why is this in it? Where this is this is a quarter of this deck's budget. And again, and I'm gonna quote you directly, you had one lying around. What? Yeah. <laughs> this I think I pulled one in a box and have, just went into my binder. Hey Joda, I know you have in your color list. What about your mono green one? I mean there's like it's just I but listen, don't get me wrong. I think it's great that you gave it to him. And I think it's a Oh whoa 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 pause. I didn't give it to him. So I'm le I let him borrow it. <laughs> okay. So it's on retainer. Yeah, because I actually, I used to have an Immacruel in this deck, oh, and I took, took that out because I, no, I, need I, I needed it for one of my decks. So don't worry. Once I need it, I will go get it, but I just don't need I it right just, now. So, okay. Whatever. This card's good in this deck. It's good in any deck that can ramp. Done. Okay, back to back to the point at hand. You have how many decks? 40? Uh, ish. Yeah, and you're telling me there's not one of them that couldn't use this? Probably not. What? It's <laughs> insanity. It's insanity. Like, Joda, I already have okay. it. Okay. Colorless, I already right. have it. Mo your mono green big I, mana I, deck is going to go right in there. Easy. Eh. You already have a board click. I don't in really there. have a. <laughs> What's the difference? And I, well, I already have a Kozilek in there, so I don't really need Ulamog in there. I, I really like when I put Ulamog or Kozilek randomly into a deck, it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm making big mana or I yeah, can cheat it out. I really put it in for the anti milk yeah, you monster and that's it. it. Oh, and you guess yeah. I guess you don't so, have an, or you don't have a dedicated artifact deck either, right? Uh -uh. Yeah, because that's usually where this slots into. All right. I like I said, it makes sense in this because it costs it'll cost what? Nine, nine plus whatever else reductions that you have so which is insanity yeah um casting this for nine is like backbreaking i mean i don't know how you come back from that <laughs> um well and, and the fact that we're saying cast it for nine but if we did it from a turn perspective he could cast us on turn six oh easy. yeah you easy. no sweat with all the ramp with all the mana dorks everything there even even if the gore claw eats it like this is a turn six turn seven turn eight every time but here's the thing. So the reason this is a hops, though, and not like a yeast 
He doesn't have evasion on his own right. from a trample or can't be blocked. Yes, with Goreclaw, it does give him trample, but really the reason Ulamog is in this deck and so good is being in mono green, you obviously have some limitations. I get it, it's the best color in Magic, Fast. but it's the Annihilator 4 and the Destroy Target Permanent. Yeah. Those are the two reasons it's in hops, because if he gets just one swing, getting rid of, at that point, five permanents for nine mana at a maximum most likely and now they have a 10 10 coming at them that's indestructible yeah oh my god yeah, that's insanity monster mash is gonna happen it's what this effect is called when it goes to the graveyard and shuffles back in it's called monster mash that's what everyone that's that's widely accepted in the magic community so everyone get with the Fair times enough. all right well big tuck what's your last hops card so uh I think there's probably better versions of this card, but I just think it's really cool, especially in this where it really cares about giant creatures, right? There's like this, there's a slight fight sub mechanic in this, but I think this does that, but better. So I was hoping to talk about Band Together. So two colors in mm. green, um, it's 17 cents from War of the Spark. In times of peril, the vision of the ancient Parunes had for their city comes into focus. Up to two target creatures you control, each deal damage to their power to another target creature. So, I, there's probably an argument that's like uh, Beast Within or Ken, 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 Ken Ritz Transformation sure. or whatever's better. But in this deck, you're yeah. going to have so many big, beefy creatures. It's going to be mm -hmm. 14 damage or whatever, right? Like, if you're talking about yeah. raw creature removal, and again, this isn't for every deck in green, but in a deck that's big, that's stompy, that's got like big toughness, like this deck will at instant speed, right? Clear blo clear blocker at instant speed. And on top of that, there's no damage coming back. I think it's a really, really solid um, removal option in a big deck like this. And you just talked about it with your first tops card that we shared. You use this, you know, you play your Apex Altasaur, get to the next person's turn. Hey, uh, during your uh, uh, upkeep, I'm going to go ahead and cast Band together on Apex Altasaur for a land. I'm going to target someone's land war elves, start the trigger, right. and I'm going to start blowing everything up before you could do anything. And there is, you know, some cards in the spice package that also have Enrage. Mm -hmm. So this could be another way. Hey, I'm going to target both of these things at this thing. And so that way I could start kind yeah. of the triggers down the line. Um, a lot of cool things you can do with it, and I think three mana is nice because, like, the, I think what the card wants is it wants to take fluffy or tiny creatures to get rid of something big, right. and I think this deck can do that because it does have that, and we talked about it, like, with the wall, they have pretty decent toughness, mm -hmm. but then the other side, say, you even have your bigger stuff, but someone else has a big-ass creature, too, band together to take out someone's 15 mm -hmm. 15 or 20 20 uh tor and mauler right, or something right, right. ridiculous like that yeah just just cool inclusion and the fact it's an instant speed i think it really puts it over the top yeah all right well my last one is another eldrazi <laughs> but the thing that i've the thing i've noticed when the godfather plays this deck it's not like people pick on him and it's not like he necessarily you know, does the art of the steel, mm -hmm. but people do do pretty decent threat assessment. Oh God, you yeah. got that 12, 12. I need to get rid of it. So artisan of Kozilek is a great way that he can recycle the good stuff out of his graveyard back to the battlefield. Right. So nine CMC colorless creature Eldrazi. It's an uncommon. It's a 10, nine for 53 cents. It does have annihilator too, like uh Ulamog. And when you cast Artisan, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's going to do a lot. Maybe you had to kind of sacrifice your Apex Altasaur early on right. or because you were going to die or because the Godfather just wanted to blow up 13 things for some reason. <laughs> uh, you know, bring your Artisan. It comes back out. Apex Altasaur triggers again and you can start the process over. It, it's, it's nice to have a card that is going to do his theme of going tall, but then it's also going to help recycle his graveyard to the battlefield. Right. Uh, I, I completely agree with you. And I think what's really interesting is all these Eldrazi cards are, so, they're so good on their own. Right. And they're so powerful. And it just shows you how big that two mana discount really is. Right. Cause this, this effect yeah. on a nine drop is also insane. Right. But this effect yeah. on a seven drop uh, is like, criminally unfair right so i kind of yeah. like how there's this weird like 
budget Eldrazi theme to it, right? Just because why sure. not? Um, so I, I think there's a lot of... I, it, it just goes to show you how powerful these cards are and how big any amount of discount for creatures especially really push them over the edge. Yeah, and I think for... Because this isn't uncommon. If this, was, this cost seven and had all the same stuff... It would have to be a mythic at bare minimum, oh, yeah. if not like a special secret layer, like Walking Dead <laughs> yeah, version that's not legal in any format. Right, ex exactly. Yeah, I totally, totally agree on that. So you're turning, turning uncomics into mythics, turning mythics into things that should be in Mr. Combo's decks. It's the, 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 uh, Goreclaw does it all. <laughs> Trigger fist pump. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up the hot profile. Now we're going to head over the yeast, and I guess I'll keep talking. So funny thing, Big Tuck. We've talked a lot about big creatures. We've talked about how this deck does big, tall, scary things. Not a single yeast card of mine is a creature. Ooh. Well, we're actually... Went all non-creatures. Interesting. And the reason is there is not a single creature that will hit the battlefield, and it's like, if I land that, I win the game. He has a lot of creatures that do a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but a lot of times when you have this budget go tall, they're either overcosted, which Goreclaw kind of helps yep. with, they lack evasion, they have some other negative impact about them. So I wanted to talk about ways that no matter what big tall thing he gets on the battlefield, he will be able to get some damage. In. Perfect, because I, and so the first one, I'm talking first about one, only big things that enter the battlefield. <laughs> so oh, perfect. <laughs> so we won't match on any no. of these. Uh, so the first one I want to talk about is a equipment that it's had a dollar sixty four, which is kind of surprising because Big Tuck, I don't know about you. I've tried to get this card into decks, but then I always end up cutting. For, it. I know exactly where we're talking. So, I, I'm right there with you. Tra trail Trailblazer's boots is always right there, but then I always get rid of it, and I don't understand why. <sighs> yeah, it's uh, it's 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 weird. Uh, yeah. And what do you want? Do you want me to read it off? No, no, I'll, I'll read it. It's it's two to play. It. It's artifact equipment uncommon from Zendikar. Dollar sixty four. Equip is two. It's much easier to list the places they haven't been. Uh, equipped creature gets non-basic land walks. So basically, it's unblockable as long as the defending player has a non-basic so land. Not, Why the hell do we never make a home It's not blockable it? as long as you're playing commander, pretty much, is what that, is what that text reads. Yeah, I, so, pretty much. I, you know, I'm in the complete same boat as you. I've had this. I This was in the Tice pile, I think, drink. Uh, I'll say, if you have a copy, I have a home for it. I just have I had I had piles of these and I was like slam dunk every Voltron and everything else. And I think the I yep. think for me the reason why is let's compare this card to a bad equipment now, uh Loxodon Warhammer, right? Okay. So a lot of times I feel when you're putting this into a deck, they already have some semblance of evasion, right? Okay. And for me, a card like Loxodon Warhammer gives evasion, pumps them, and then also helps you with the lifelink, right? So so okay. so for me, it's always been like, well, my I'm playing Voltron. I always ha I already have piles of way to give them evasion, whether it's through flying, whether it's through whatever. And I think the fact sure. that this card doesn't doesn't protect them, doesn't pump them, maybe that's the reason yeah. why. But again, it's like you it's so hard to make that argument because you're like, okay, well, now this just opens up all your other creatures that don't have evasion into having effectively unblockable, right? And you think about this with locks it on Warhammer, it just gives trample. Right. It doesn't make it to where it can't be blocked. And so, and that's where it's like, I'd rather have land walk than trample because mm -hmm. then I don't have to worry about trample. Uh, you know, you could play, and, and there are a lot of go wide decks that you know squeak and throw 40 elves in front of your dude and it's like well crap i mean i guess i took out a bunch of elves mm -hmm. but i lost my big guy that i probably spent 15 mana over the last couple turns equipping right. and yeah, uh, right, right, right. aura and all this stuff this is just two mana and you're done and you're right this is basically says a great creature has edh games can't be blocked <laughs> yeah. uh, for the most part so uh but anyways trailblazers boots Great card in a Gore Claw deck. It's budget ish at a dollar sixty four, and I think when you talk about equipments that give pure evasion, whether it's flying 
or land walk or protection from colors. I think this is probably on the cheaper mm -hmm. end of a lot of I, those. I completely agree with you. That's yeah, that's that's All weird. Right, well, yeah, it's weird. Uh, what's your first East so card? Is, what's your first big so boy? So this is like another, I see this card played fairly often. This is another card that actually pairs extremely well with your last one, which is funny. So um, sometimes Gorklaw isn't gonna get the work done for you, right? And sometimes you need to bring out the big guns. Or should I say the big Gruns, the Lonely King. Ooh, I knew that's <laughs> what you were doing. Uh, I thought you were going to make some lonely no. joke. Like when Gorklaw can't get it done, this lonely outsider yeah. will. The lonely person on the podcast who's going to go and cuddle with his cat later tonight, certainly not cry himself to sleep, is going to get find it done here. first. I know. It. Yeah, he's, he's fine. He's got a fat on him the last outside <laughs> for two months. Four colorless green green for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature, eight warrior. It's an uncommon coming in for a quarter. Kicker three, you may pay an additional three as you cast a spell. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with five little encounters on it. Whenever it attacks alone, double its power and toughness until end of turn. Terrifying. And I will tell you, he has played this, he has kicked it, and it has been terrifying. It's 2020, it's a 20, effectively a 2020 for what? Nine? Or, I'm sorry, it's a 2020 for seven? Seven, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think this is the thing where it's like, it's... Some people play this as commander. I'm I'm more iffy on that, right? I mean, it's cool because it's yeah. a 2020 and you can like sneak it in. But I think when you're running out of options, if you if you need if you need stuff to block, which in this deck you might if you're playing other fast decks, you can play down this creature, throw one of these assortment of different effects on him, and he's sure. just gonna start going to town. I mean, you play him kicked. Next turn, you put the boots on him. Next turn, you pay four, cast the boots, put him on it, and you swing it in for 20, and you have an entire board of giant threats to block. I mean, it's one thing if it's like 10 or 8 or 12, but 20 points of damage, even if it's not commander, like, that's a lot. Well, and on the low end, the absolute worst end, Tuck, you're paying four for a 5-5 five, five, that when it attacks, it becomes a 10. Yes. Like, four, that is... Is is absurd is seven to potentially do twenty paying four to just get ten? I mean, good God, is there anything in Magic that costs four that's a ten ten? Do that I don't, all I don't day. think there is. All day. Hold on, there's one. There's the uh, Gigantosaur that is five green for a ten ten. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, that's that's, that's it. That's it. This card. But wait. That's a, that's also five. This yeah, is four. Oh, yeah. Great point. <laughs> no, like, and actually, to that point, this card is just strictly better than that for the most part, right? Yeah. So I I just think it's cool how it's like it's a it's a beast on its own. It can get in the damages, and it can kind of be your back. Like we talk a lot about like backup commanders or backup win cons. I think yep. this is a great example of just for one of these effects on the card. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, my second one. This is a card that I always want to find homes for. It's it's. This is another one that I really struggle to find homes for. But when I've seen the Godfather, when people set him back, believe it or not, it's usually not a board wipe, like as in destroy or exile all creatures. It's usually like some sort of mass bounce mm -hmm. or put everything back to hand. Um, and that's usually what happens. So from a recovery standpoint, he usually is playing a bunch of stuff at once. Ronos's Monument lets him capitalize on casting two, three, four things a turn. So, three colorless, legendary artifact, green creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Great, this yeah. and Gore Claw, everything costs three less. Whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and trample until end of turn. Up, oh, up, oh, gotta get Big Tuck's glasses. Up, oh, yeah, up, nope, still not doing it. Up, oh, up. Oh. Uh, the Worthy shall hone a strong body. To endure the boundless energies of the afterlife. The nice. Monument's Inscription. So, uh, I love this card in this deck. It has done amazing things. To A, just to make your stuff cost now three less is broken. Mm -hmm. But the reason it's in a yeast is because when I have seen it work, he will cast two or three or four things in a turn because it's late game. He has a big dude out. And you know what happened? He cast Harmonize, got Llanowar Elves, Llanowar yep. Tribe, and, and Wall of Roots. And it's like, cool, dump it all. I give my Grun plus six, plus six. So now he's a 16. He attacks unblockable for 32. Dumb. Just dumb, dumb, dumb. 
every single one of these monuments needs to be played more. Like, I'm going to go on record here, right? And I think people are... Uh, yeah, well, okay, the, uh, I don't, the blue I, one's not so hot. The blue one... And I don't think the I don't think the red one's that great. I like it. I like that. that. So the red one is when you cast a so red spells cost one less to cast and then cast a red. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. Which it, yeah, I just don't think I don't think red casts a lot of creatures. It's a lot of I'm making tokens, tokens. and stuff. Yeah, if it's yeah. I so but I, the interesting tech on that was I've seen people play this in like Boros because it doesn't specify red creature. It's any creature. That's which right. Is, that's which is right. interesting, right? Yeah. The blue one's fine, but it's like a creature doesn't untap. And I think people are starting to figure yeah. this out because the Bantu's monument, the black one, is f- almost four dollars for an uncommon from Omniket, yeah, that's good. which people ripped open in the streets. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, but yes. Yeah, we all we all wanted those terrible invocations. <laughs> hey man, you got them. Come, come hell or high water. <laughs> I did. I, 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 got, I got twice, just for the collective to know, I ripped enough packs, I mean, by enough. I think I did a case, and I, or not a case. I did a booster box Ooh, and maybe I was about a half. A case, damn, buddy. <laughs> a lot. No. B- booster box and a half of Amonkhet, give or take. And I ended up getting two of the same invocation, and it just happened to be the worst one. I think it was the sun, not the sunblast angel, but like the, oh, the vindictive the angel? angel where they, well, it has like the kicker cost to where it destroys the, all lands oh, or something the, oh, like the that. Giant. Impossible to read ones too, right? Yeah. No, you, yeah. Got the, you got the giant that if he comes into play and it wasn't kicked, it kills all your creatures. If it was kicked, it kills. No, oh, that's no. I think it was Desolation Angel, right? No. Desolation Is that Angel. right? Yeah. Yeah. I got two of them. I think it was worth a whole six dollars. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, you made your money back. Wow. It's sixteen now. If you can find some moron to buy that off of you, look um, at you go. So, Mister Combo is so funny. You, we're two for two because of the card I'm saying. The card I have gets significantly better with Ronus Mario too. Because I want to talk about a card called Impervious Great Worm. So seven Ooh. colorless, triple green. Uh, it's a mythic. Uh, it's also a box topper. Uh, it's a 16, 16 indestructible. Uh, the ultimate answer for intrigue and salty. Awesome. Um, and it's also got convoke. So your creatures can help cast a spell. Each creature you tap while casting the spell pays for one colorless or one mana of that creature's color. Right? So again, exactly to your point, you tap out with this guy and they're like, Oh crap, board wipe. Ha ha. I still have him. Right? Ronus of Monuments there. Next turn, play Atlanta Royals. Play, 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 18, play. 18, 18. Uh, yeah, like uh, the Naga crap that you have in here. 2020, swing it in. <laughs> you know what I mean? It works out perfectly because yeah. I think, I, like, the part of the issue, part of the downside with Goreclaw is she has to attack to get the bonus, yep. right? So I think, I think Ronus Monument does a very good backup plan of that, right? Where sometimes. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're going to have a big creature out like the Great Worm and you're like, I don't want to attack with Goreclaw because I know she has nowhere to go. Right. So now you have this yeah. baked in thing of you're going to be casting creatures every turn, no matter what. Right. And now you can do a, a Goreclaw effect and go tall as opposed to fluffy like this deck kind of does. Well, and I think, though, to, to actually you make a great point, Tuck. I think when you have a board state where it's impervious Great Worms of the world or Ulamog Infinite Yires of the world and you have Goreclaw and it's like, gosh, I really want to get that effect. I actually think you put the Trailblazer's boots on Goreclaw so oh. then it therefore is unblockable. You swing, but then everything else gets trampled because of her effect. Ooh, that's, that's good. something. That's, uh, yeah. You know, we, we, just, we just made those we, boots we so much it better. Out, especially in this deck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, wow. It's like, do, do, do I hit you for... 16 or 20 or 10 with this one thing or if i have enough big things that you know the plus one plus one's negligible i mean i think we can just leave that there but hey if i can give all these things trample i just gotta swing with gore claw somewhere right. okay i'll swing and i'll make sure the boots are on it or some sort of unblockable or uh indestructible i'll put it on him because everything else isn't gonna die right, exactly Ooh, the tech look at it look at it all coming together all right let's see if we can go let's see if we can match uh three, three, for, three. for three all right, so the last one I'm talking about is I'm going to go out on a limb and say this because mono green is a live in the red zone color. This is a mono green staple. Blanchwood armor <laughs> should be in every single deck that runs mono it green. Goes, Let me guess this pairs with yours. It goes perfectly. 
I'm not even kidding. It goes perfectly with mine. <laughs> Two colorless green enchantment aura. Uh, it's twenty five cents. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each forest you control. Yeah. You're in mono green. Why the heck wouldn't you? I don't run this in a single one of my decks, and I don't yeah. know why. I only have one mono green deck to to be right. fair. But still, like throw throw this on Marwin and all the orphans that she steals. Uh -huh. She gets humongous. Tapper for a billion mana. This was one of those cards, like, along, we didn't talk about it, but, like, Rancor, that was impossible to find when I was playing Type 2. I Rancor love Rancor. So good. I wanted to talk about it, but I thought this deserved a little bit more love. So, okay, this player's, this pair, it's so perfect. Because, again, some sometimes you don't have Trample. Sometimes you don't have Indestructible, right? But uh, the old Squee classic, Thorn Elemental, it doesn't matter. It's perfect for this card. Five colorless, yes. two green for a seven seven. Yes. You may have Thorn Elemental deal its combat damage to a defending player as though it weren't blocked. Thorn oh, Elemental. Man. Blanchwood oh, Armor. Feels. 2020. Woo, Go man. ahead. Do doesn't matter. Do you just want to lose 20 or just lose 20? Block it with whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> Do you have 20 power? No? Okay, don't even need trample. Like, might as well not uh. block it at that point. That's hysterical. It works so well. It works perfectly together. Yeah, that's so gross. That makes me really happy. Which is ironic because you, do, you don't yeah. really need... Thorn Elemental on the surface is... Eh. It's kind of, Yeah, it's kind of... Uh, but again, for me, uh, I mean, it's like... Uh, no spoilers, but like a Siege Behemoth would be... Like a, a mass oh. Thorn Elemental for everybody. Right. And uh, Big Tuck. You're gonna have to go on the naughty list. You didn't read your flavor oh, test. Oh shoot! I apologize. Oh. Uh, I don't need that. Cool. Missed. All right, I'm back. I'm, I'm, the holidays are back. Everything's cleared. Slates, cl <laughs> slates and white. Rain <laughs> from this storm leaves you pinned to the ground like an insect. Oh, that kind of sucks. Yeah, that I was hoping it was gonna be. But anyways, awesome card. I really like this. Um, I think it's great in this deck because then in theory he become an eight eight with trample right. and you can assign the damage as though it weren't blocked. So you can kind of choose, like, oh, I'm going to just do a little bit here. But yeah, with uh, the Blanchwood armor, it's, per holy it's, per crap. it's perfect. It's so good. Or going back to your first one, Blanchwood armor on Grun the Lonely oh. King. <laughs> Blanchwood armor. Okay, so here's. They die. So this, is the per this is the perfect <laughs> one, right? Grun, you go like Grun, Rhodus on, uh, Rhodus Monument, uh, Trailblazers boots, right? Next turn. <laughs> but why? Why? But why do you need the Ronos's monument? Because then you're gonna cast Blanchwood armor, then Thorn elemental, then give Ro then give Grun the plus two plus two, and then swing it. In. It is. Oh my it's god! Dripping, but <laughs> there's a world. There's a world where that can happen. <laughs> there's a world where that can happen. Oh man! I believe they call it magical Christmas land. Indeed, and I'm a believer now. Look, well, in this, I'm, I'm believing. He's back. It's the holidays. He's. I can hear. I can hear. I can hear the jingle bell. Oh yes, of course. Tim Allen's Santa Claus. Is that a reference to that? No, it's a reference to um, the Polar Express. Jingle all the way. Polar Express. Damn. Oh, that's right. That's right. Sorry, I'm mixing up my Christmas movies. Well, we're gonna mix out of the yeast package and head over to spice. Lots of spice here. A lot of stuff I didn't put in the deck. <laughs> Uh, so Big Tuck, why don't you start it off? What's your first spice? So I card? think you intentionally didn't trade this to me because you wanted to be in this in this deck, and I don't know. I I have always been on the fence with this card, and I think it's because I'm too dumb to really think about how it works. So uh, <laughs> this is a <laughs> there's a lot of uh, it's a mythic, and uh, it's from Battle Bond, and it's a worm. Oh. Okay, uh, Grothama Old Devouring. All right, so I'm gonna try to piece this together, and not black out. Three colorless green green <laughs> for a ten eight legendary creature worm. That's a mythic. It's about four bucks, which I don't know. Okay, other creatures have whenever this creature attacks, you may have it fight Grothama Old Devouring. When Grothama leaves the battlefield. Each player draws cards equal to the amount of damage dealt to Krothama this turn by sources they controlled. So, so okay, so correct me if I'm uh, wrong, all right? So just hear me out here. So the best case scenario in this deck would be... He pays three. 
and he has some way to give it indestructible. Right. So, which that's not even so, that good. Okay, yeah. So, you have impervious great worm out in this. Impervious great worms attacks deals sixteen to it, and then you draw sixteen cards. I guess that's the best case scenario. <laughs> really, the reason it's in the deck is I didn't have a home for it. <laughs> it's a five drop. That's really a three drop. Yeah, and that's it's a ten eight. eight. And I mean, I guess from a Godfather perspective, it's, hey, if you want to attack and have it kill like eight of your creatures or 10 of your creatures, go right. ahead. Be my guess. So you, you, but it's super fringe on every piece of I the think pie. it's so it's one of those cards where like as soon as this got spoiled, I was like, oh, that's cool. And something different with green. And then I would like sit and think about it. And be like, should I build this? And then I would just sit there on EDH rack for hours and just say like. I don't get like <laughs> you have to make it indestructible and then you just kill all of your stuff for no reason to draw cards. It's so strange. Yeah. But I like but like e either that or, or you or you waste your Blanchwood armor and hit it with like a with with the, the dude and so maybe it's like a 32 32 you draw your deck, yeah, and deck right. yourself. It's like, forget forget you're not playing blue so you can't lab man. <laughs> I still think I think it's still a cool card and I still like it in here, but I this is another one where it's interesting. And I've never there's never been a time where I've actually seen this like someone cast this. Never. I think th this is this is only good in my opinion in battle bond draft. Oh, then it's unstoppable. Then it's when, when, you're, when, when you're doing two headed giant, then it's just phenomenal. But that's literally the only thing I can think of that makes this card good. I, I, I don't want to. I'm not cutting it, but I just don't like every time. I, I'm not it either. Takes me like first off, it takes me like five minutes to read it, and then it takes me another twenty minutes just to mm. think through. It's like I don't know. But anyways, it, it's a cool card. I like it in here. Maybe it's someday he'll prove us all wrong. Yeah, maybe. Well, mine. I just I I don't feel like this deck is yeah like there's only seventy nine pips in the deck. Oh, and so I don't I don't think Reverend Hunter like it's just it's weird. Yeah. Like it could be amazing or it could do nothing. Mm -hmm. So, Reverend Hunter, two colorless green, creature human archer, it's a 1-1. One, one. When it ETBs, put a number of plus one, plus one counters on it equal to your devotion to green. So, like, worst case, you get one. Yeah, two. <laughs> Best case, I think maybe you get, like, six or seven. <sighs> this, I, this was a card that I think, I probably, I think I gave him this one. Because I, I played against it when I was living in China and starting to play again. It was, like, unbeatable. Like, cause they would ca they would cast uh, it for three, and like I saw this guy playing this like Turbo Elves deck that was standard or something, and he cast it for three, and it yeah. had like he'd get eight out of it, and be like a nine wow. nine, right? Nine 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 and, and, and a, nine nine nine. <laughs> so I do th I do think a card like this is probably better in like my mono green mm -hmm. elf deck because I'm not doing a lot of tokens, and so I just got a lot of pips, but they're all like one drop, two drop, three drop right. pips, uh, and so it's gonna get a bunch. But this one. I feel like he's gonna have like maybe like four creatures on the battlefield, maybe three. And a lot of these big mana guys, it's a green and seven, or a green or two green and eight, stuff like that. So I think it's an interesting card. I'm not cutting this one, obviously, because I'm talking about it, but I think it's very hot or cold. It's either gonna be dripping in sweat or slidey yeah and we're greasy. going straight down the slide without the wax paper they make you sit on which actually <laughs> uh, funny funny story there I actually thought that was like to be held in your hands to throw up in like if you got sick on the slide oh my god they're like man that slide was oh so fast god. I was like really I don't it was pretty damn slow for me <laughs> oh well it's not pretty slow as we're moving on from the spice package and heading over to the bottle capping and as a reminder these will be big tux and ice cuts and adds to the deck they're going to be under five dollars under fifty five dollars <laughs> and a no budget five dollars <laughs> recommendation we just can't do mana only lands so i'm going to start this off with the under five dollars um i'm going to cut and i'm assuming this either came from squeeze stuff or his stuff but stream of life, like what the hell? <laughs> Why the hell is could, this in I, here? It makes so much sense, but you can't. I couldn't do it. It's like this is another classic Godfather card. I just I couldn't bring myself to it. <laughs> nah, it's gone. A stream of life guide is an X spell green sorcery. Target player gains X life. 
<laughs> the thing with this deck is it's a big mana deck, but it's big mana off reductions. Not because he's, you know, Azusaing and constantly like tutoring and playing multiple things, burgeoning. Like he's not doing that. And he doesn't have a way to create infinite mana. So this is just stupid and it's out of the deck. I, so it's you made mention at the top of the cast, this is like a deck that would have been amazing four years ago. And when I first started playing oh, yeah. this, I was like, stream of life. That's got to go in every green deck. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my six, God. Six life for seven. That's unbeatable. And then I had it in Prosh and I played it once. And then someone's like, OK, 25 damage. <laughs> It's like, all right, here we are. Yes. All right, I'm dead. So I actually got multiple of these in my Commander Legends box, but this is an absolute slam dunk because it's going to get reduced by two, so it's really only going to cost four, and it's going to make his deck just explode. Kadama of the East Tree. Sure. So it's normal cost is four colorless green green. It's a legendary creature spirit. It's a six six with reach, which I do think the reach is relevant because he doesn't really have a lot of stuff to do yep, flying agreed. in this deck. So that will help whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control. If it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto Oof. the battlefield. So you, and you kind of talked about it earlier with a less a gross way, uh, but Wall of Roots. Oh, play Wall of Roots turn two, take a put a counter on there, then you get down your Land of War Elves. It's like a two for one. This allows him to two for one everything, literally everything. Yeah. So now it's no it's no longer which one do I do for the situation? It's like, oh, I'll just put the bigger one out and then get this, and it's great. For four, that is insanity. God, that's God, yeah. that's good. <laughs> I know this is this is a card that honestly I could see the Godfather playing and it immediately be kill on sight. Yeah, this is the kind of deck that I think makes a kill on sight. Like I've, I've contemplated putting this in my gear deck, mm -hmm. but it's like but I make a token. So I guess I could put out a right. land like that's that's not good. And so if you're not if you're doing a go tall with actual creatures, not tokens, this thing is insane. Okay, I'm switching. I'm I you reminded me I'm hot I'm hot swapping right now. So uh oh, hot, hot swap, swap. hot swap. Too sweet. Too sweet. Too sweet. Too sweet. Ooh, nice synchronization there. What was la okay, Mr. Cobble, what was the last time you watched that movie? Because I saw it once in theaters in college. <laughs> Oh man, I've probably watched it at least once a year. No, Twenty one, bringing down the house. Yeah, I, I don't know if the bringing down the house is part of the uh, title, but yes, twenty one. Wow, that's that's something. It's a good flip. I, I didn't want it's to agree flip. to the. I, I didn't want to agree to the twenty one bringing down the house because that's like some terrible sequel. Because it sounds like a terrible sequel. No, it's the name of the. Well, oh, maybe. Oh, it's the name of the book. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, the movie is 21, just 21. Right. Oh, God, that movie's terrible. I was, in my mind, combining... Uh, is there a movie called Bringing Down the House? There's a Talking Head song. There's called, a movie called Big Mama's House. There's a house. Talking Head song called Burning Down the House. Wow. Well, I guess I'm somewhere in the area. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll get back to you later. All right. Uh, so, my go. So, I'm going to cut this card because I hate it. Elvish Aberration. Screw it. I hate this card. It's totally not good. <laughs> Four, four five. It's a four five for six. Oh, come on. For elf that taps for three colors and four cycles for two. But it's really three for what, three. Whatever. It's not like this. Or this four card for serves three. no purpose. It's overcosted if you don't have Goraclaw in. You're, what are you going to tap it for mana? Then you just forest cycle oh, it. Okay. Then you forest cycle then it. What? Then what? Then you get a forest hand? What if you don't need a forest? It sucks. You like you like. What, what do you mean? You only play green in this yeah, deck. Like, so of course you're, you're gonna your need land, a forest. Your <laughs> landfall in your hand. It's garbage. I like. I want this card to work. It's way too. It's way too sweaty. We're cutting it. We're going back to the grease. We're gonna try to lower this mana cost down a little bit in some semblance, shape, or form. Um, and we're gonna go with Land of War Visionary instead because it does the exact same thing faster and more efficiently. Two color and a green for an elf druid. When Land or Visionary enters the battlefield, draw a card, tap, add for a green. So you're ramping faster, you're drawing a card, it's immediately replacing itself, and it costs half as much mana. What's not to like? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't like it at all. It, it gets away from the big stuff. Well, trust but me. here's the thing. that, the, that that's, that's your cut. Uh, I'm, we're going to do it to his deck. He doesn't get a say in the matter. Yeah. And uh, I guess, he'll, I guess he'll, he'll just be sad that he doesn't have a... He said he won't have a seven drop that taps for three. <laughs> yeah, think of the value. 
I really hope he plays this deck after we've done these cuts and he's like going through the deck and he's like, son of a bitch, where <laughs> yeah, what's, is what's that, that guy? Aberration? I need it. I need the, th I need the three the mana. Off the top of his head. He's yeah. like, I've been looking for the aberration. I tutored for it. What the hell? All right. Well, my under 50. I love this card. It's actually pretty pricey at, uh, I think it's like eight bucks. Yeah. Polyraptor. It, it's way too cute yeah. for this deck. So, six colorless green green creature dinosaur. It's a mythic. It has enrage. So, whenever it's dealt damage, create a token that's a copy of Polyraptor and it's a 5 5. In in innumerable pack is concealed in a single reflection. So, the initial thought when I kind of put this in here was oh, cool. Like, big dude, he'll probably cost six. Yeah. And the enrage, I'm sure, will work. But I think if you want enrage to work from a Polyraptor perspective, is you really need a way to be able to ping it for one to kind of trigger that effect a few times. I think the Apex Ultasaur works mm -hmm. with Enrage because literally when it enters the battlefield, it happens. Yeah. If Polyraptor entered the battlefield and said, do this, then I think it's a different story, but it doesn't. Yeah, I agree. So, we are going to cut the Polyraptor for a very cute card Ooh. because of the fact that He's gonna be doing. He's gonna be swinging, and like you said, sometimes you want to swing with Gore Claw, but you don't have a good avenue. So now you can't do your plus yep. one plus one in your trample. Well, if you have Vigor Oof. in the deck, that literally takes care of it. So three colorless, green, green, green creature, elemental incarnation, six six, and it has trample. If damage would be dealt to another creature you control, prevent that damage and put a plus one plus one counter on that creature for each one damage prevented this way. And when Vigor's put into the graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. So it does multiple things. One, you could swing with Goreclaw literally every turn with no yeah. repercussions. It just gets bigger and she becomes massive right. if people decide to block. And then if people decide to murder the best removal card in Magic, Vigor, <laughs> It gets shuffled back in and you monster yeah. mash and you're good. Like, unless it's going to get exiled, you're always going to be solid. And then on the top end, if you pay four for this, good yeah. lord. Like, it, it's disgusting. bonkers. Wait, and, could you uh, imagine using this with the fight creature earlier and fighting yourself with Vigor out? <laughs> yeah. You can't. You can't do that. So we talked about that on Lowry's episode because it prevents that damage instead. Oh. And so fighting would never be able to happen again because it never gets dealt damage. Okay, okay. I know because I had actually put that yeah. in for one of Lowry's uh, bottle cappings and he's like, sorry, bro. Yeah, don't look right, like that. Right. In, the spirit, in the spirit of the Godfather, I got a little half chub at that idea. <laughs> uh, also, oh, that's also gross. literally every time I look at it, it looks like the shell is eyes with like a mustache. I it's, know. Okay, I'm not the only person who sees that, right? Okay. Nope. Yep, I see uh, it too. I also have a uh, movie report to uh, to uh, represent. There is a movie called Bringing Down the House, and it looks like I it's got it. it looks I like it's it. got Steve, Steve Martin, Martin? Yes. Steve Martin, Queen Latifah, and Eugene Levy holding a dog of some variety. So okay, it sounds like so a real sounds like a real nightmare. That up. And two to give you a <sighs> depiction of what was going on in my head, it was like Bringing Down the House and a casino movie like mixed into each other. And it was like I, I it was very, very. Is this a real? Is this a real nightmare? I'm glad to know I'm not slowly going right. insane, <laughs> like me. Ah, oh, well, that's that's still yeah. up for debate. Yeah, that's plausible. That's 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 true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Big Tuck, what are you doing for your under fifty dollar cut and ad? I'm the elemental. Adios. X green for a creature elemental and enters the battlefield with X one one counters on it. You don't get a discount. Yep. You don't do anything with it. You're not generating infinite mana. You're not playing elemental tribal. Sorry, buddy. On or more. Any other questions? Yeah. I, the, the only thing I could think of is that maybe he put this in the deck just not understanding that he doesn't get the discount. Oh. That's the that's the only thing I can Cause think of because I don't see any damn reason there, why it should be in the deck. There's infinitely better. If you want to do a big X spell, there's millions of better ones out there. Like Genesis Hydra, that's the same amount of money. So um, you when you said you had a spare, I remember I had this too. So uh, this card is very good limited, and it turns out when you get to pay it for six instead of eight, it's even more insane. So we're talking fresh off the presses, Commander backup Commander Two, Kamal Heart of Krosa, six colors, oh. green green for a five five. So let's be honest here, it's a it's a four colorless and two green. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and gain trample until end of turn. Uh, Colors to green until end of turn. Target land you, you control becomes a one-one elemental creature with vigilance, indestructible, and haste. It's still a land. The, so I, as soon as you said the Commander Legend thing, you're like, I had to spare one of these. I was like, did I even open a Kadama of East Tree? I was like, no, but I opened two of these MFers, and they're three dollars. So <laughs> send it again. This card is insanely overcosted, in my opinion, for what it does. Yeah. But it, since it's a five-five, and since this card is going to come out so fast with land ramp and creature ramp. Getting this down on turn, I don't know, five, like Goreclaw turn four, Kamal turn five. Now your Gork, now everything that has, if Goreclaw attacks, everything gets plus four, plus four. And even if Goreclaw gets killed, yeah. you still have him lying around. And if you have extra mana left over, you can just turn your little creatures into armies that when they attack will also get the Goreclaw trigger. <laughs> yeah. Like again, it's super, it's super top end, right? Like this is like, massive other end of the curve but if this sticks but I think, it's brutal but I, yeah I th- yeah i think you're doing exactly what you want and i think tuck to your point if you have a bunch of scary stuff people are like okay we got to take notice as soon as you plant kamal they're going to try to get rid of that specifically yes. before they worry about anything else because the way i look at it is i don't think a kamal is going to make someone say oh now i should board wipe I think they're already going to be worried. Holy crap, we're about to die. So if they have a board wipe, board wipe's going to happen before Kamal truly hits the battlefield. (laughs) But then if he hits it and people have been paranoid anyways, like you just already swung out and did a bunch of damage, this is going to get murdered ASAP. Or Swords to Plowshare, Path to Exile. And you know what? I would almost say whether you get this down for six and he does his overwhelming or uh, overrun Mm -hmm. effect, or you pay six and you save your Ulamog or your Grothama from a removal spell. Either one is yeah. decent. Yeah, totally, totally agree. So it just came to me and it like, it, it's a lot, but I think it's definitely worth the squeeze, if you will. Oh, don't worry. And it, you know what's funny is how you and I were on the kind of like same page um, earlier. My next ad is very much on flavor with this <laughs> nice. as well. So. Uh, I'm going to be cutting Spore Mound. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm sorry, Squee. I, I don't know what you've done to this guy where he just keeps putting in all this BS token stuff with <laughs> one ones. This deck doesn't want one ones. This and Verdant Force are just dumb. I only left Verdant Force in because it is a 7-7 seven right. seven at least. So Spore Mound, three colorless green green creature fungus, and it has landfall. Whenever a land ETBs can make a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. What are you doing to our friend? <laughs> I don't think I did this. Really? This has you written all over it. <laughs> I mean, he may have looked through my binder and picked it out, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I did not uh, okay. instruct him to just well, be like, here, you need this card. And the funny part... But I know you told him to put Spore Frog in there. Fuck that card. <laughs> There's also a card called Zendikar's Royal that does the exact same thing as Spore Mound, but it's a 2-2 elemental, and that card is an enchantment. Why is Spore Mound played anywhere? <laughs> it's it's I have no idea. <laughs> All right, so this is a card that is great. Coming in 69 cents. It is kind of a a one-time deal, and it has some piggy piggies. I know who you're talking about. End raise forerunners. Sure. Uh, So five colorless green, 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 or three colorless green, green, green. Creature bore seven, seven. Vigilance, trample, haste. When an ATBs, other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain vigilance and trample until end of turn. Smash this city to pieces, Domri Raid. Well, let me tell you, if you plant this end race forerunners out there, the Godfather's gonna smash something. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's literally just like <laughs> Well, what's funny is you're like, hey, can't afford a crater huff? Do you want? Do you like Eldrazi? No. All right, I raise Pro Runners for you. A boar that ends a game. Do you like Eldrazi? Yes. Perfect. Decimated of the provinces. Also a boar. We got that for you as well. Um, it's just funny how they have these like two alternate effects that are significantly worse. But yes, I, it's amazing for yeah, like for five. Is that right? No, no, no. Six. Six. Oh. six. Yeah, it, there is. I think there is. Because he has like one overwhelming stampede effect, right? So to your point, it's yep. good to have another one in the backup just to just to get well, the damage through. And, and if we're putting Kamal in and this an overwhelming stampede, because there's going to be times where overwhelming stampede. Okay, cyclonic rift, crap. 
Okay, I'm gonna come all. Oh, I can't let that happen. Let me yeah. murder it. Like people can only use removal on him specifically so much because this deck is not a top end deck. Right, right, right. The people need to be concerned with myself, you, Squee, Sir Nathan, Duff, right. uh, the Goad, um, terrifying Tyler for that matter. And so you can only dedicate so many resources to the Godfather, right. which makes him. To, you know, to the news segment, if we talk about people that sneak out wins, he's probably the only person I could say is the definition of the stealing a yeah. win, the art of the steal. And that's only because, though, he truly doesn't really care about magic that much. Yeah. He just plays to hang out with us. He doesn't even really make his own decks. It's just like if we have stuff, he'll throw some stuff together. Yeah. And his actions in the game make zero yeah. sense. <laughs> so... Like, he is the definition of the art of the steel. Um, and it's just so funny because I think secretly, subconsciously, he actually is a quasi good magic yeah, yeah. player. It's just just the the frontal lobe. He's just like, ah, I don't well, and I think, shit. And I think, like, we've talked about before, like, he likes getting the rise out of people, right? And he likes, he yeah. likes making... I don't think he ever makes nonsensical plays. I think he makes plays where he's going to get a reaction out of people, right? And yeah. I think this, like, that card like this... This is a deck that only wins through combat. That's it. Yep. One way, right? So the fact that we have all this redundancy, he's never going to come out. And I've never seen him play this deck, but I feel like he's never going to come out and be like, you or I, if I'm playing, you know, Prosh or Perforos and be like, I'm coming. Sure. I'm playing a deck. I'm coming screaming. Right. And even though, and even sure. though this deck sure. can do that, I just don't see him being that player. Right. So the fact where it's like, to your point, Stampede, okay, it's like Long Rift, great. Rebuild yeah. my board, turn after that, come all, murder. Just these baked in redundancies, I think is a, is a really good, is a really, really good idea um, and, and a great pick here. Yeah. 100%. All right, man, wrap it up. What is your last cut and are you adding more redundancy? Uh, just, mm, Possibly. Possibly. I'm cutting Star Compass. Um, it's a good card. It just doesn't. What? You don't need this in mono green. Just put in a rampant growth. It's better. <laughs> or a recent this, printed three visits. If, if this was, yeah, perfect. If this was, if this was a Rakdos or like a Azorius, Star Compass is an all star. You do not need this in a mono green deck. For that matter, you also don't need a Traveler's Amulet, a Thran Dynamo, or a Moss Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways but you just you just you just cut all of his right ramp. so i'm saying you put in all the mono green ramp you have you have finhorn elves and Lanor elves there's not an elvers mystic in and here tribe kadama's reach you don't need artifacts in the stack so we're cutting star compass because it comes to play tapped and you don't need it you don't need this card note in a mono color deck but it's turn two then put in prismatic lens that you can at least tap on turn two all right. So, anyways, um, the, as you as we just discussed at length, I do think that this deck, when it gets going, does kind of telegraph itself a little bit, right? Like, Enrace Foners, is, it has a huge ass. Um, Kamal has a huge ass. Uh, Overwoman Stampede, huge, huge ass. ass. <laughs> huge These creatures, ass. his commander, <laughs> huge ass. My neighbor, the, the, the my neighbor, the accountant, Hugh Jazz. Uh, is that like so, a poor name for Hugh Jackman? Hugh Jazz. Hugh Jazz. Uh, so anyway, so we need something, we need something that there's, I think there's one card for $2 that does a lot of things. It's not a flashy card, but I think it, it smooths out a deck like this quite a bit. So I'm voting to put in Vivian champion of the wilds. So two colors hey. and a green, uh, legendary planeswalker Vivian comes in with four loyalty. So, uh, the big one is you gave you may cast creature spells as though they had flash, right? Which I think is the main reason why you run this. Yeah. Um, let you kind of sneak in stuff, let you kind of play at the opponent's pace. Um, and then plus one, uh, up until your next turn, one target creature gains vigilance and reach. Again, pretty valuable, pretty right? Yeah. You can and going back to many of the things of like the Thorn Elementals, um, the the impervious great worms, you can keep them as attacking and blocking. And then minus two, look at the top three cards of your library, exile one face down and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as the card may, uh, remains exiled, you may look at it. that card. You may cast it as, as a creature spell. Kind of lets him draw. It's a creature-heavy deck. There's probably going to be either a land that you don't need or a creature that you can exile out of that top three um, and then be able to play that at whatever you want because it lasts for the rest of the game. So, again, it's it's yeah. this, is, this is, in my opinion, a, a mono-green standard 
if you're playing just straight mono green, I think it fits into a lot of decks. And it is, just, but to your point, it is a little meat and potatoes. Yeah, the only thing that would kind of worry me about it is I don't know if he's going to be able to protect it enough yeah. to to let her stick around to get the value that clearly Star Compass brings to the table. <laughs> uh, um, so that would be the only thing I'd be worried about. I, yeah. I think this is something like the Godfather, to my knowledge, doesn't really play Planeswalkers. Like, I don't think I ever really see him or uh, none of the decks we've talked about have had Planeswalkers. They're far have they? too expensive. I don't think so. No. Kadena, I don't know. Does Kadena, your Demir? Uh, yeah. Kadena, Kadena doesn't have Kadena it out of the box. Doesn't come with any out of the box. Demir, no. And I don't think you're Demir, no. And this, no. Well, I'm not some maniac. So, this is going to give away Planeswalkers. Yeah, because the dollar sixty is really breaking the bank. Uh, so that's that's the thing that I'd be worried about. And yeah. I, granted, this could be good growth for him as a Magic player. Uh, you know, if that's something he's wanting to do is knowing that when you play a planeswalker you plus it you target a creature swing with that particular creature but then leave another one back for blocker so that right. we have a few different blockers it's kind of like the whole thing that i talked about in the mtg action 4 news this last tuesday with my uh shirai deck and how i was able to ultimate the liliana right. planeswalker because that's usually a planeswalker that never gets to ultimate but I purposely did not attack with anything just because it's like I need to keep up blockers so that way she can get there. And I don't know if he is going to be able to think of that strategy with Vivian, because mm -hmm. honestly, I played this Vivian in standard uh, on arena and she's a bomb. Yeah. But you always have to have blockers back there because you don't want to pay three mana to use her once. Right. That just doesn't yeah. do anything for you. Three, so, three, but mana, I maybe, love three mana, maybe draw a card right yeah maybe um and but i do think it's an amazing card for a dollar 60 i wonder if that has gone up in price or down in price since war has rotated i'd be interested to yeah. know that but uh i think that's a great ad and i'm proud of you for giving him a good planeswalker and now we're at the end of the episode and as promised here's some details about our giveaway from our sponsor level one game shop we're giving away both of the commander legend precon decks cmd tower playmat and 100 pack of sleeves to enter, it's super simple. Just promote the content you're watching, viewing, listening, reading. Everything we do here at CMD Tower. Um, we will announce the winner on MTG Action 4 News January 5th and social media soon after. And yes, these giveaways will happen every single month. Just support CMD Tower and Level 1 Game Shop and we'll keep supporting you. But we would actually love some five-star reviews, some sweet comments, uh, feedback, whether it be on our website, YouTube, on a podcast platform. Uh, someone gave us a one star on uh, app, Apple Podcasts. Yes. Yeah, I know. Uh, collective come out in force. Did they say something? What? Why are you? I hope they why are you? No, they didn't. Why? It. No, just I, I don't know. I, I like it. I like the negative energy. Bring it on. It just it only makes us stronger. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Now I feel like just shutting down the channel as of December 31st. Well, yeah, screw over. you guys. You yeah, congr congr congratulations. congratulations. Screw these people. I got to show that one star they're wrong. <laughs> but yeah, that would be nice. They do nice things, <laughs> not mean things. If you would like to reach out to us and find out more ways you can enter into the contest, here's how you could do that. You can reach me at Mr. Combo number five on Twitter. All spelled out except for the five. Big Tuck, where can they reach you? So I'm an idiot and I actually uh, downloaded the Twitter app again. So now I have something to do when I'm bored at at work or on the toilet. So you have something I, to do when you're pooping. It's, yeah, it's horrible. Um, but I am on I am on the Twitterverse at Big Tuck Tweety. Succinct. I like it. All right. <laughs> you can reach our main account at CMD Tower on Twitter as well. We do have a website, cmdtower.com, where we also will have the deck list and article posted and even a link to the YouTube video if you guys are listening to us and want to check out the great work that T Coats does for the channel. Basically, all you've got to do is type in cultivate mockery of nature, <laughs> druid of the cow, tower.com. Squeamy Gee, if people want to get a hold of your Manolith commentary, how'd they do that? Oh, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Richie Ass Records. You can find me. It's a dear Squeamy. Wait, did you say Richie Ass Records? R Richie <laughs> Ass Records. Oh, no, we ain't Richie. Richie yet, but, uh, Richie, but Richie like Rich that. Records with your new that, job? No, that'll be phase two. That'll be my, like, uh, once we've made it, it'll, it'll go from Rich Chaos Records to Richie Ass Records. It'll be nice. <laughs> Anyways, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Richie Ass Records. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter <laughs> at Deer Squee. Uh, 
preferably dear squee at cmdtower.com you know send me a question i'll answer it articles come out every wednesday uh, also squeeze pack crack don't forget about it uh it's on youtube go subscribe give me a like give me a dislike you know from a couple of minutes ago if you give me one star i don't care i'm just gonna put out more videos so you can suck on it that's how it's gonna be <laughs> So wait, if they give you five stars, you put out less videos? No, well... Great qu great question. That is a great question. So I'm technically, <laughs> yes. So if you really like it, downvote it, and then I'll work harder and put out more content. <laughs> I'm a, listen, I'm going to step in here, and I usually don't like to step... And I know, I know, I know you guys all think I like stepping on other people's bits and taking the spotlight. I'm just going to come out here and just say this. Please don't do that. <laughs> please, please don't give us <laughs> negative comments. <laughs> how about this do five star reviews with negative comments per yes perfect best you take the world here you take them here and you put them together so i learned a little bit about the youtube algorithms and if somebody downvotes your video it still counts toward the algorithm to get it to share to other people because people have interacted with it oh think about that well, anyways, uh, clearly uh, Squee McGee is a troll, but he can also handle all your audio needs Hi. and doesn't have a full studio. If you ever do come in the Kansas City metro area, masks required. A jar of toenail clippings would be welcome. Ooh. Oh, please, please. For if the you want love to... of God, don't bring that over here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's, that's like my nightmare. If you would actually like to hook up our sponsor, though, with the orders you're already doing, maybe get a Commander Spellbook Green for like 70 bucks. Mm -hmm. If by the time this airs, it's still that price or cheaper, head over to level1gameshop.com. When we place an order in the order notes, just type in CMD Tower. So they know that you came from the collective. collective. They do sell sealed product, singles, play mats, dice, board games. Just they're great people here in Kansas City. And they do hook you guys up with those monthly giveaways. So just giving a little bit of money back to them lets them know that this partnership is worth it. If you would actually like to put dollars physically in our pockets, so maybe when Big Tuck moves, we can actually get him decent microphone and rig. Head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash CMD Tower. We have four different tiers from just a dollar to $25, and it gets you from just access to the Discord to getting all of our swag. Plus, whenever we come out with new swag, whatever tier that's on, you get the swag automatically. So we kind of help encourage you to keep giving us money because, <laughs> hey, we put out great A content, but then also we come out with new shiznits. Plus, every tier gives you additional entries into the monthly giveaways, which I'll say our collective is killing these monthly giveaways. So if you guys want a shot at winning, donate a buck so you can actually get additional entries because I don't know about you guys, but I would rather it if Spencer Rabbits never wins a giveaway. <laughs> Just kidding. I love you. Uh, also, I found out uh, if Uncle if Uncle AJ uh, wins one of these, it's going to be a pretty pricey shipping because he lives in Hawaii. Well... Perks of the Collective. Yeah, that's it. Uh, but if you guys can't help us from a monthly giveaway, but you would like to actually pick up some of that swag we've talked about or just support the team, head over to cmdtower.com slash merch. We do have a full storefront with all the stuff that we've created over the years from super nice stitched play mats to matte sleeves to the the you know gold plated but fake gold so fool's gold plated uh monarch and reminder tokens to even the awesome squee sitting tight get up and fight coin designed by marketing ross and maybe even a commemorative 2020 banana hammock <laughs> maybe with big tuck's face on it <laughs> yes yes well there you go no, i didn't i didn't say where your i didn't i didn't say where your face would be it's just gonna be on the banana hammock somewhere yeah it's cut cut to you like course, a romantic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and of course, thank you again to Pink Royal for the music in the episode. So, Tuck, we are three quarters of the way done with White Elephant Month, <laughs> and this is a deck we've alluded to the last couple weeks. Gore Club, you flexing, son. Uh, how do you feel about the deck now that you've heard why it was built, how it was built? You've seen some cuts and ads. Is this a deck you want to sit across? Uh yeah. Um. <laughs> I know we're saving the best for last, quote unquote. Uh, so it's a bittersweet feeling. But yeah, like I, you know, the Godfather is he's he likes to play that he's kind of aloof, but I think he's actually insanely smart. So it, it would be really interesting. And I'd really like the opportunity to play against him with a deck like this. 
that just on its surface has a better chance of working, winning, being more aggressive, being scarier mm-hmm. than a lot of the other decks that we, that we built for them. Um, sure. So I think with those, I, honestly, though, I think with some of those ads that we're talking about, like it could get out of hand pretty quick. Yeah, it, it would actually be a deck that when we do random decks, I would actually want to play it. Mm-hmm. Unlike unlike the other three decks where it's like, I don't want to play yeah, this. All right, well, I guess I just lose. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, it's late. We're at a close. And I got to poop. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>